Good day. This lecture is about lines and planes in the three-dimensional space. The section is divided into two parts, and the first part deals mainly with equations of lines. Let's begin. Recall that generally, a line is uniquely determined by any two points on the line. Moreover, in the two-dimensional space, one can use a point on the line and the slope to give an equation of the line. However, in the three-dimensional space, we kind of lose the idea of slope. This is because we can have several lines with the same steepness, but pointing in different directions. These leads us to the following question. Aside from two distinct points on the line, what objects uniquely define a line in the space? To answer this question, let us consider the following illustration. Consider a vector V, which is non-zero, with the following position representation. How many lines parallel to V are there in the space? Right, there are infinitely many lines parallel to V. But among those infinitely many lines, can you guess how many contain the point P naught? Very good. There is exactly one line parallel to V that contains the point P naught. This idea tells us that in the three dimensional space, a line is uniquely determined by a point on the line and a non zero vector that is parallel to the line. From now on, this vector that is parallel to the line is called a direction vector for the line. Our goal is to find an equation, or probably equations, that is satisfied by every point on the line L, given the coordinates of the point P naught and the components of the vector V. So suppose now that P naught has coordinates x not y not z not, and v has components a, b, c. If I'm going to take a point p anywhere on the line L, then clearly the vector drawn from p not to p will always be parallel to the vector v. That is due to the fact that v is parallel to the line L. Algebraically speaking, that means the vector from P naught to P is a scalar multiple of the vector V, which means there should exist a real number T for which P naught P is equal to T times V. On the right-hand side, we can plug in the components of V, while on the left-hand side, we can compute the components of P naught P as the coordinates of P minus the coordinates of P naught. This equality of vectors will give us three equations. Applying the fact that two vectors are equal if and only if their corresponding components are equal. Equating the first components will give us X minus X naught equal to A times B. Equating the second components give y minus y naught equal to b times t. And equating the third components, we have z minus z naught is equal to c times t. For each equation here, if we isolate x, y, and z, we have the following equations. x is equal to x naught plus a t, y is equal to y naught plus b t, z is equal to z naught plus ct. What is nice about this result is that every point p on the line L has coordinates x, y, z expressed in terms of the coordinates of the known point, the components of a direction vector, and the parameter t. These three equations are called parametric equations of the line L. 
if in each equation here, we solve for t in terms of x, y, and z on the first equation, we will get t equal to x minus x naught over a, provided a is non-zero. On the second, we have y minus y naught over b, provided b is non-zero. And on the third, we have z minus z naught over c, provided c is non-zero. Since t is equal to itself, those three expressions must be equal. Hence, we have the following equations, which we call symmetric equations of the line L. Note that we can only do this if all of A, B, and C are non-zero. In the case that one of them is zero, say C is equal to zero, then the third equation from the parametric form will just give us a Z equal to Z naught, so that the symmetric form will be x minus x naught over a equal to y minus y naught over b, comma z equal to z naught. Let us consider this first example. Given two points, a and b, we want to find parametric equations and symmetric equations of the line that contains these two points. So from our derivation, we just need a point on the line and a direction vector of the line. Well, from these two points, I can connect using a vector the points A and B. We can form the vector from A to B. This will have components coordinates of B minus coordinates of A. That will simplify to the vector one negative four, five. And this already defines the direction of the line. I can take any of A and B to set up the parametric equations. In particular, if I'm going to use the point A with coordinates zero, three, negative four, together with the direction vector one, negative four, five, the line will have parametric equations x equal to the x coordinate of point A, which is 0, plus 1 multiplied by t, that is simply t. y would be equal to the y coordinate of A, which is 3, plus negative 4 multiplied by t. And z would be equal to the z coordinate of A, that is negative 4, plus 5 multiplied by t. If I want the symmetric equations, then I just have to solve for t in terms of x, y, z here. That will give us the following. x equal to y minus 3 over negative 4 equal to z plus 4 over 5. Note that there is another point on the line, which is the point B. We can also use the point B to give parametric equations and symmetric equations of the line L, and we will get a different set of equations. But be reminded that although the equations are different, they represent the same line. Let us take a look at the second example. In this example, we are given two lines L1 and L2 with the following parametric equations. We would like to determine whether these two lines intersect, and if they do, we want to find the coordinates of the point of intersection. Just like in any other mathematical problem, when we talk of intersection, we always mean a solution to the system. If these two lines intersect at the point P, then that means the point on L1 is also on L2, which implies that the X coordinates must be the same, the Y coordinates must be the same, the Z coordinates must be the same. Equating the expressions for X, Y, 
nz from L1 and L2, we have the following system of equations. 2t minus 1 equal to 3s minus 5, t equal to 5 minus 2s, and 3t plus 5 is equal to s plus 6. Observe that in the system, there are only two unknowns, s and t, while we have three equations. Recall that to solve for a solution, we only need two equations. So I can use any of the three equations, any two of the three equations to solve for S and T. In particular, I will leave this as an exercise. When we use the first and the second equation to solve for the values of S and T, we get T equal to one and S equal to two. To verify whether the entire system has a solution, these values we obtained from the first two equations should satisfy the third equation. If I'm going to plug in t equal to one on the left-hand side of the third equation, I will get eight. If I plug in s equal to two on the right-hand side of the third equation, I will get eight as well. Since the third equation is satisfied, that means this system as a solution. This guarantees that the two lines intersect. Their intersection is the point on L1 where the parameter value t is equal to 1. That is the same point on L2 where the parameter value is equal to 2. Plugging in t equal to 1 on the equations of L1 or s equal to 2 in the equations of L2, the intersection would be the point one, one, eight. You might be wondering, what happens if the first two equations has a solution, but those solution do not satisfy the third equation? In that case, the two lines do not intersect, and we have two possible scenarios. In the space, either the two lines are parallel or the two lines are skewed. Two distinct lines in the space are said to be parallel if and only if their direction vectors are parallel. Two lines in the space are said to be skewed if and only if they are not parallel and they do not intersect. As an example, Consider L1 to be the line with symmetric equations, x minus three over four equal to y plus five over two equal to two minus z over three. We want to find parametric equations of L2 that is parallel to L1 and containing the point with coordinates two, negative three, nine. Well, there is already a given point on L2. We just need to find a direction vector of L2. From the given symmetric equations of L1, we can take the denominators of each side of the symmetric equation, provided the coefficients of x, y, and z in the numerator are 1, as the components of a direction vector. That would be the vector with components 4, 2, negative three. Please take note here that the third component becomes negative three since the right-hand side, two minus z over three can be rewritten as z minus two all over negative three. Now, since L2 is parallel to L1, L2 must be parallel to a direction vector of L1. This means we can also take V as a direction vector of L2. Now using the point two negative three nine and the vector V four two negative three, we can set up the following parametric equations of L2. X would be equal to two plus four T. Y is equal to negative three plus two T. 
and z is equal to 9 minus 3. Now let us have an example of skew lines. Let L1 and L2 be lines in the space with the following parametric equations. We want to show that these two lines are skew. We simply use the definition of skew lines. We need to show two things. Number one, they should not be parallel. And number two, they should not intersect. From the given parametric equations of L1 and L2, we can see that a direction vector of L1 is the vector whose components are the coefficients of t. Name it v1, and that will be 3, 1, negative 5. On the other hand, for L2, a direction vector will have components, the coefficients of s. Name it v2, and that will be the vector. 3, 2, 2. L1 and L2 will be parallel if and only if V1 and V2 are parallel. That means V2 must be a scalar multiple of V1. However, since the first components of V1 and V2 are equal, they will be scalar multiples of each other only when the second and third components are also equal correspondingly. Clearly, they are not. Hence, V1 and V2 are not parallel, and therefore L1 and L2 are not parallel. Now, to show that the two lines do not intersect, we assume otherwise. Suppose they do intersect, then there must be a solution to a system where the x coordinates on L1 and L2 are equal, the y coordinates on L1 and L2 are equal, and the z coordinates on L1 and L2 are equal as well. We form the following system. Again, here, there are only two unknowns, while there is, or there are, three equations. Using the first two equations in the system, you can verify that s and t are equal to 5 and 3, respectively. For the two lines to intersect, these values of the parameter must satisfy the third equation. However, when t is equal to 3 on the left-hand side of the third equation, we get 2 minus 15, that is negative 13. On the other hand, with s equal to 5, on the right-hand side of the third equation, we get 5 plus 10, which is 15. Clearly, negative 13 is not equal to 15. Hence, the system has no solution, which means that the two lines do not intersect. And because they do not intersect and they are not parallel, they must be skew lines. That concludes the lecture for lines in space. Here are some exercises for you to work on. You may pause the video if you want. And if you have questions, you may send them through the comment section. Thank you.